Oh, yes, Rudy. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Serious video time. I've been watching your YouTube channel for a couple years. Can't think of a better creepy person to offer an opportunity to purchase this item. I'm an OG player. By the way, OG uh, is not original grilled ham sandwich. It's original gangster. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Collector from the inception of Mad Inception. That's a great movie. I'm at a point in my life that I finally have been ready to part with a couple items in the collection. I've had her in my possession for 25 years. I'm glad she's going to a good home. More, eh, not more of a home, more of like a metal vault. I appreciate your straightforward, honest approach. I don't know, the internet may disagree. You're a solid dude. Eh. If you would like to see some other corner pieces from my collection, be happy to send to you pictures. Never part with my beta black lotus, don't even ask. <laughs> uh, I don't want to show the back has his name. Thanks, Marco. So we got this really cool package that showed up today. Check this out, folks. You ready for this? Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. I know, I know. Before everybody says anything, I have X-rayed it. It only has 30% G.I. Joe cards. <laughs> Sorry. All right, too soon. Let's get a nice thumbnail picture, shall we? How about that? That's a nice thumbnail picture. It only contains 30% G.I. Joe. No, I'm kidding. We got a really, really fantastic packaging, by the way. Holy cow. That's a really, uh, really cool piece of package. So we're not going to go over too much as far as authenticity and the seals of the box and all this stuff. And we've been through these conversations many, many times. One thing I do like about Magic, I'm like, you know, uh, G.I. Joe Pokemon uh, Special Editions is you can actually look in and uh, you can see the packs. You can look around and everything like that. Uh, very, very nice box. Very beautiful. God, these things are so old now. I cannot believe. Isn't it crazy to think here we are in 2022 and this is 1994. That means we're literally like around 24 months away from this being 30 years old. Any, but dude, how crazy is that? So, all right. This is going to be a Rudy Rambles video, so if you want to see the box and leave, you are free to uh, hit the thumbs down button that nobody can see because the world is sensitive, and uh, enjoy your day. Get a taco on the way home, seriously. Um, today I want to talk about Revise. So I bought this from the gentleman for $9,000. Uh, you guys can comment or argue, high, low, rip off, scam, overpriced, and the price and the Revise, that's up to you guys. So, and again, if you have, a, if you have any sealed boxes like this, um, you know, when you get to the older boxes, you know, you're, you're looking at about 70% eBay sold plus I pay shipping. The, the buy prices get pretty high for me when you get to old vintage boxes. So this sucker... Uh, 9,000, Alpha Investments, LLC at gmail.com. Send the old PP pictures and uh, prices, please. Nothing, no giggities. And um, let's get into just my, my perception of the market right now. I really don't have much plans to talk about Revise much uh, moving forward in the coming weeks or months because there's not really much activity going on. Uh, dual lands are just flat. Uh, Wheel of Fortune is kind of sitting around that 300s for Minty. Uh, and of course, you got a lot of the forks, the doppelgangers, you know, the tutors, and all the other iconic little copy artifacts, brain geysers, and you know, all these other cool cards and revise that were, you know, revise is garbage, Rudy. It's ten dual lands. You you open a box like this, you get a bad box, you're getting one or two duels. You get a good box, you're getting five duels. It's five dual lands or bust. And again, uh, first, I want to comment a little bit on how this product and why this product. Uh, derives its value, and um, I'm going to talk about that. So first, we'll address the dual land situation. Um, this particular box, I can either A, keep it sealed the way it is, which is what I do with all my revised boxes. Uh, B, you can open it and have the individual packs sold or graded or whatever you want to do, which is more risky. I would say use caution on that path, especially in recent events. Um, C, you can open the entire box. You can, you know, sell box breaks and individual packs to people. That's a big thing. Um, D, you can just crack them all yourself on camera, like someone like me, and put the video up and make a couple hundred bucks in the video, maybe. if it, Well, maybe not a couple hundred bucks. If it does well, maybe $100, $200. Yeah, maybe, maybe if you're lucky, uh, depending on seasonality and time of the year and how much people love you in that moment. Um, you can crack all the cards, and you can send the dual lane. Now, let's pretend we get an average box. Okay, well, let's say the average box contains three revised dual lands. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing three revised dual lands, and let's pretend it's a perfect world, and they're perfectly centered, and they're absolutely gem mint. You get PSA 10s or Beckett 95 quad 6.9s, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know. Let's pretend perfect world. I know that's not really realistic, but humor me. What is the value of a PSA 10 revised dual? What is the value? Of these gold label fancy schmancy dual lands, even from revised nowadays, because there is definitely a significant uptick 
between certain individuals and you know many look at the bids look look at look at the sold I mean people are buying and paying premium prices for graded revised cards especially if they're PSA 10s or, or Beckett gold label fancy schmancies again I'm not going to comment much about the other 45 new grading companies I'm really not going to go that route the only reason they exist right now is because Beckett and PSA got backlogged screwed it up shut it down pricing delays because they've just they got greedy took in too many things they couldn't keep up and then that spawned the army of new grading companies. I'm still highly, highly skeptical. I don't know anything about the people behind them. I don't know how good or bad they are. That's really not my opinion to make. And I have no plan on trying to make that opinion. They could be fantastic. They could be garbage fire. They could be half and half. My point is, basic market just fundamentals are going to return to once the two big boys, which I've been hearing are starting to get back on track now. Uh, I've been hearing over the next few months they're going to fully get back to normal and they're going to have discounted sales on grading cards. I've been hearing all kinds of rumors, but I, I think that was kind of the idea by mid-2022. The big boy PSA and Beckett are going to get back to normal. And in my personal opinion, it's going to absolutely clobber and annihilate the new grading companies. Essentially, the only com competitive advantage they're going to have to offer is either a better service or a lower price point to become or to stay relevant and I would not be willing to uh, play a part or bet in that particular market that would be very dangerous and I don't I don't like the direction of that I would say use extreme caution but anyway so the value is you know people seem to underestimate like why would anybody pay you know ten thousand dollars or I see revised boxes selling on eBay for twelve thousand and thirteen thousand right now well maybe the two that are available for sale you know people seem to not understand because they look at it and they say okay if I open the box, even if I get three dual lands and a couple cool cards, what am I going to get? A thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars in value. So if I convert a ten thousand dollar sealed box to singles, I convert from a hundred cents in the dollar to fifteen cents in the dollar, and that's not that. That is a very shallow, Timmy type, you know, Optimus Prime kind of, you know, very primitive way to look at it because you're not valuing. The gem mint cards, there's like common cards. I mean, people don't underestimate what people will pay for even common, uncommons. You have 36 rares in the box and even basic land that are actually in gem mint condition. People will pay pretty good money for PSA 10 revised commons and uncommons. I know that's stupid sounding and that's a different, whether you agree or disagree with that, it sounds ridiculous, but I'm just telling you, this is, this is where we are. In 2022, you you have to be careful to kind of try to just make that knee jerk what so i want now i want to i think it's enough rambling on that i want to move forward to what i think is going to happen with revised marching forward now um this kind of gets into some of the other videos you guys are going to be seeing coming up here in the next 7 to 10 days um about all these market pops and price swings and certain buyouts are still happening we're seeing a return of definitely market buyouts on multiple reserve list cards. I got them all in the queue, or they're not live yet. Um, so let's look at this. Alpha is essentially done, right? Can we all agree on that? You, I mean, the average person, even if you have money, trying to acquire alpha cards is essentially over with. I think that's something that we can all just agree on at this point. You, you really can't, it, they're, they're so far out of it. They are literally on the train to museum land. And they're just, the, the quantity of alpha cards, the price per alpha card, gotta help you if you want a PSA 10 or some quad gold label 6.9 PSA Beckett 11. You, you can't get them. And if you do, if you do find someone with it for sale, it's to get that out of their hands. You're gonna have to pay so much money. It's not realistic for regular people anymore. So alpha to me is almost to the point of being a write off. It's done. Don't even think about it. Don't even try. You essentially are gonna need millions of dollars to try to make large positions in alpha at this point in time. It's ridiculous. It's, it's over with. Now, when we move into the next thing, we're just talking about base sets, by the way. We're not going to go into the four horsemen. We go into beta. Beta's kind of quiet because everybody's all about alpha or unlimited. Beta's kind of just sitting there like, hey, does anybody care about me anymore? I care about you. I, I always care about you. So beta's kind of calm, but again, the prices are obviously substantially high compared to where they used to be in 12, 24, 36 months ago. And then you have unlimited revised. Unlimited is still, in my personal opinion, as with many other people out there, people believe Unlimited is still just the most ripe underpriced thing. And I've been saying that on this channel for the last year and a half. I've been preaching you guys and the beautiful 3% ladies and, of course, the Tesla floating in space. 
I've been telling you all, the unlimited cards. It's the only way. It, there's only one white bordered Power 9 complete base set, Lotus, of course, the duels. I mean, there's only one, well, not the duels, you can get those revised. But the only, see, you can get Alpha, you can get Beta, you can get Collector's Edition, you can get International Collector's Edition. Those are all black bordered pieces of power, right? Which, they're beautiful, don't discount that. The only version of Power 9 and White Border is one. And I, I've been preaching this for the longest time, saying, you know, and I'm not saying one's better than the other, although, yeah, the Alpha, Beta, Black Border probably is a little better. But, you know, it, it's nice to have them both. And I, I still feel that the market is not appreciating the rarity and the value and the beauty of unlimited white bordered power. White bordered magic cards from unlimited, especially power nine. <laughs> Remember, if they are not stored properly, when they wear, okay, sunlight in proper storage discolors the white to yellow. Dirt and everything turns the white to black. Okay, any form of oils and things on your hand help accelerate the staining of the white border to more yellow off-white. Okay, similar to old uh, paper currency. Any of you guys into the large U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve notes that I'm into from the late 1800s, early 1900s stuff, you know, all those educational notes, 1, 5s, 10s, 20s, 50s, you know, you have off-white, you have a nice white, you can see some of the notes have a yellowing to the paper. Okay, and I do firmly believe that unlimited white bordered power and unlimited cards are just the a monster opportunity and i've been putting my mouth or wait money where you get the you know what i'm saying i've been buying them and i still continue you guys have seen them in collections of videos i continue to buy unlimited cards all right so i just want to comment on that so let's get to the final part of the video here revised revised is i don't want to say like the poor man's way or like the cheap way or the red-headed step i hate all those phrases because it, it it attaches like an emotional, psychological slant against it. And I don't think that properly represents the product. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of assigning those kind of, you know, hot takes to it, you know. Because revise is revise. Let's not sugarcoat it. Uh, approximately, let's just call it a quarter million of each rare was made. Maybe I think it's a little bit less. Let's just call it an even 250k. Even if, you know, even revise has the most. Okay, and it was the boom and this and that, and people bought them, some people threw them away, teachers took them to, you know, many people just tried the game, didn't like it. Let's assume that instead of half of the alpha surviving, let's assume that only a quarter of revise was lost. Okay, let's just assume, let's make it more bearish. So let's say that even, you know, 180 to 200,000 of each rare exists. I personally don't agree with that. I still think it's lower than that based on how much is out there in the market. But let's pretend. Let's just make even, even math. That is still so severely rare for something that's so iconic. And then, of course, you get into the people. Oh, the reserve list is going to come to an end. Oh, Rudy. I was, uh, I was on an airplane, and I saw the reserve list in the clouds, or an alien spaceship flew by. I I've heard it all. The Timmies are very special groups. You know, look, it's, we're going on 30 years. Nothing's changing, folks. I still think they should add to the reserve list out of respect to the new, younger generation, so that when they're buying new products, they are able to retain the value of the hard-earned money that they worked for in their new age collections. I still believe that there should be some form of respect for the newer generation, but that's a different conversation that people freak out about. You know, so I still think Revise has a very solid place. So in conclusion, looking at something like this, I think a box of Revise should, and I know this, go ahead, hot take it. I think a box of Revise, anything below, I think a box of Revise can easily be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a box, period. I wouldn't be, you know, and in, before I retire from YouTube in the coming years, I would be very surprised if revised boxes are still 20000 or less. And this is you know future value, of course. They're obviously not there. They haven't been able to get there, and the prices remain weak, and some people don't want to wait 10 years or something, you know, or 5 years or 8 years or 6.9 years. We don't know. But in my opinion, if people who don't need the money, and you want to just sit on it, and you have a safe place to protect it, and you can wait many, many years... The opportunity for future growth still remains. I've always believed that. I have no idea the exact price. I don't know what the market in the world's going to do. Look what's happened in the last two years. So anyone who tells you they have the secret to the world, just look them in the eye and say, did you predict the last two years? Did you predict all this? No, of course they didn't. Because if they did, they'd be a, a bazinga billionaire flying out in space. Nobody did, which is why nobody can predict it, which is proof zero to me of a zero sum that nobody knows. There's fancy acronyms and letters for you guys. So that's where we are. I think what's going to drive the price of Revise, similar to other old boxes, what I believe is going to push the price there, 
is not what people actually think. I think it's going to, well, I think people believe as natural attrition continues to go, people crack boxes and things get lost, stolen, burn, fire, you know, space, you know, aliens. <laughs> That's kind of a basic thing. I actually believe the two main fundamentals that are going to push the price up is actually random cards in revised appreciating, causing the expected value to swing some. I still believe the expected value, I mean, expected value revised is what? 1,000? 1,500? 2,000? Depending? And that's raw? That's raw, right? Not even grading and selling premium cards. Let's call it, let's just call it low. Let's, let's be bearish. 1,000. I think a revised box can easily get to two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 in EV. If a revised box is an expected value of $3,000 a box, and you're telling me these boxes are on eBay for ten, or 11, 12,000, so you're telling me a sealed box revised is only like three times or three to four X the EV of the box? That's outrageous. That's outrageously low. Outrageous. And God help the box if the card's in it and you have all these other, well, see, what's going to lead it there? I don't think the dual lands are going to lead revised in the future. I've said that. I remember talking about this last year. I believe it's actually all the supplemental rares, the brain geysers, the copy artifacts, the Vesuvins, the Shivins, you know, the soul rings, the tutors, of course, Wheel of Fortunes. You know, I, I think all these rares, uh, Fork, there's a, there's a ton of them, the Fast Bonds. I mean, <laughs> there's so many iconic rares in Revise, man. And you take this list of 20, 30, 40 rares, and some of them are even uncommons, that are iconic in Revise. And I believe those are the cards that are most primed to 2x, 3x, 4x. Because it's not, it's not impossible. It's not ridiculous. You can't tell me. A $30 rare and revise as it approaches 30 years old? A $30 rare can't go to 100 bucks. I mean, is, is what well, that's outrageous? You got Wizards selling these high-end, super premium things and cases of new Wizards products are $1,000, two, three thousand dollars $3,000 a case? And you're telling me a 30-year-old Magic card can't go from 30 to 100 bucks? I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's screen door in a submarine. Yeah, that's silly. That's silly. So, that's what I think is going to happen. The final thing is, again... I do believe we, there will be a time and a place when magic box breaking kind of becomes more mainstream on YouTube, similar to what Pokemon went through. I don't think it'll ever get that big like the 2020, 2021 Pokemon, but I do believe box breaking, as we've seen some other, you know, large YouTubers starting to do vintage box breakings more often. I'm not a huge fan of them. I get patrons asking me about vintage box breaks. Um, sometimes I've entertained the idea. Every once in a while we do a rare box opening in Urza's box or you know, a weather light box or, you know, every once in a while we do go in that route, but I over, I'm not a huge fan of it. Even when people pay full price or I just say, well, if you want a box break, you know, a sealed box revised on eBay is 13 grand. Well, 13 grand, you get the box, I'll ship them to you and you get the video. And many times people say, sure, let's do it. And I still, I kind of, I'm not, that's really not that exciting to me because I don't see 13 grand. I don't see this box. I see a very rare 20, 30, $40,000 box in the next 10, 15 years. <laughs> that's, that's, so with that perspective and not needing the capital, it's very difficult to make me want to go in that other direction. So that's my opinion on it. The final thing is, um, I want to address one last thing. I actually, this is going to be a hot take. It's in the video. No one's going to watch anyways. I actually believe the revised starter bricks are going to become the $30,000, $40,000 items before the booster boxes. Because there's only 25% print run were starter bricks. And 75% of the print run, I believe, was boosters. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's a, I mean, a, probably 1% or 2% variance. Um, the revised starter bricks are so stupid rare. I haven't even been able to locate one and find one for sale at a decent price for at least over a year now. The booster boxes still come up, but I actually think the revised starter bricks are going to lead that way, especially if it's a sealed full brick, not individual decks, okay? Because the sealed full bricks, similar to like flesh and blood alpha cases, the cases in crucible cases and arc cases are going to carry a higher premium than the individual boxes due to like certain pull rates and certain ability of people to try to map things. So I think sealed uh, revised starter bricks are actually going to also lead the charge there. And they are just so rare, man. You guys, like, oh my god. Like, go on eBay. Try and find a revised starter brick. Even just for sale. Sold listing. Anything. There's none. It's so difficult to find. So, 
Hope you all learned something today. Uh, no, the box isn't for sale, so please don't just email me asking for you know, old stuff for sale. You've seen the videos, but thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you all learned something. Again, beautiful day out there. Yes, the world's turbulent. Yes, the world can be very bearish, and a lot of people out there are negative. Just be careful. It's a beautiful world. Don't, uh, don't let it get to you.